Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do straight line quilting using the walking foot for your sewing machine. Now the two table runners behind me are two that I completed with my walking foot using one half inch straight line quilting. I really like the texture that it gives um, projects. It's really one of my favorite ways to um, quilt table runners. These are actually two UFOs that are now completed. Okay, so let me give you a close up. So you can actually see on this table runner how the straight line quilting adds a beautiful texture to this project. This is another UFO and you can see how that half inch straight line quilting just gives a beautiful texture to this project. And on the back it looks just as beautiful. Okay, so let's cover some of the basic supplies that you're going to need. Now one of the most important pieces of equipment you're going to need is your walking foot. Now you know I have a Juki and a Bernina, but I'm going to be demonstrating um, straight line quilting on my Bernina and this is the walking foot. Now a lot of machines will come with a walking foot but not all machines do so you may have to order one. Now it's important when you order one to be sure you're getting one that fits your machine. And sometimes there are different walking feet like this isn't the only walking foot Bernina puts out but this walking foot will fit my Bernina 550. So be sure when you go to order a walking foot that you get the correct one. Now I like to quilt uh, and just piece with my walking foot. Uh, the most, I, I always use my walking foot when machine quilting or when I'm putting bindings on. Also I do this when I make ragtime quilts. Now. The thing about the walking foot is this little lever attaches to the needle bar and so when, when your fabric moves across, when, you, when your fabric moves under this, these lift up so it's not pushing the fabric all forward, it's just lifting up as it goes so it's not um, pushing that fabric and causing it to wrinkle. Okay, so you'll need your walking foot. You don't have to have uh, machine guard gloves, but I do use them even when I'm straight line quilting with my domestic machine. Again, they're not absolutely necessary, but I find it a little bit easier to hold on and guide the fabric when I have these gloves on. You're going to need one of your long acrylic rulers. You're going to need some painter's tape. You're going to need a small ruler. You can use even your little seam guide if you ruler if you want. And then this is um, something that I just bought just a couple of days ago and I really do like using these. I found the perfect use for these when I am machine quilting and I'll show you that in a little bit but these are the um, Jumbo Wonder Clips put out by Clover. I'm so glad I purchased these and I can put a link in the description below for these. Okay now I actually have two of these table runners I needed to finish so when I get this one done I will have finished three UFOs this weekend which is very exciting. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to prepare our project first. Now, I have just spray basted this. I like spray basting. My um, project lays nice and flat. I don't have to worry about the fabric shifting around. Okay, so first, we're first I want to show you how to um, mark your fabric before you get started. Now this is a second 
table runner like what I just showed you. I had two of them. And this is actually another UFO. It looks just like the other one, but it it isn't the same one. And when I have this one done, I will have completed three UFOs. Okay, so what we're going to do first, when I start quilting, when I quilt a project, I quilt from the middle out, from the middle out. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to establish a baseline. And I'm just going to do that using painter's tape. Now I've lined up my ruler so that it is running parallel to these and perpendicular here. So I'm just going to use my ruler and I'm going to mark my baseline. Now this now when I say baseline, this is going to be the baseline for my first row of stitching. And I'm not going to sew along here, but I am going to run the edge of my walking foot right along there. Now when you do straight line quilting, the majority of people have a tendency to stitch downward. And then for some reason at the end, they start to curve. They either curve to the right or to the left. And on here, I'm going to add what I call a reference line. Now, this reference line, to me, is kind of like the lines on a highway. This reference line, to me, serves one purpose, and that's just to help guide me going in a straight direction so that I'm not curving. And every so often, I'll measure my last stitch line out to here to make sure that I'm not varying. And if I am varying a little bit, then I can easily just make a correction. Now, when I say correct, I don't mean rip out and all that. No, just to correct with your next row of stitching. Okay, so baseline and then your reference line. Now, the reference line here will keep moving. Okay, now here is the setup of my machine for machine quilting, and I want to just show you something that you really need to be aware of. This space back here, all that needs to be free so that your quilted project isn't getting hung up on anything back behind the machine there. Now, I wanted to zoom in and show you how the walking foot fits right over this little piece where you're, you tighten up your needle. It has to go right over that. That's what helps move it up and down. See, as you can see, the walking foot moves up and down because it's attached right here. Okay, so the space from the needle out to the edge is one half inch, the same here. From here out to the edge here is one half inch. So if I just line the lines up on the outside, that's how I'm going to get my half inch machine quilting. Okay, now just another note, I did put in a new needle. It's important that you change your needles frequently and this is a 9014 quilting needle. I use the Schmatz and this is a green one. Okay, so that's a brand new needle and it's the one that they recommend for machine quilting. Now, I set my stitch length at 2.5. Now, people often ask, well, what do you set your stitch length at? And this is what I did. I simply took a piece of fabric, just basically a quilt sandwich, and I sewed at 1.5, at 2, 
at 2.5 and 3. And then I just looked at the stitch length to see which one I like the most. And I really like the 2.5. Now you don't want to just sew on a regular, just a single layer of fabric because when you machine quilt, you're going through all three layers. So when you do your test strip to see what you want your stitch length to be, and to me it's really based on preference, um, you need to sew uh, on, on the quilt sandwich. Now, when you use a smaller stitch length, it seems to go down deeper into the fabric and it almost looks like it's embedded more into the fabric. And here's some other things to consider. If you're using shiny variegated thread that you want to show off, then you're probably going to want to use a larger stitch length. Or if you're using denim, I would recommend a larger stitch length. Now, you might want to use a smaller stitch length like over here when you're using monofilament thread because it will help hide it a little bit better. But really overall, I base what stitch length I use <laughs> on what I prefer. Now as you can see, the edge of my walking foot is just going to travel right along the edge of that piece of tape. Now when you get started, you're not going to race, you're just going to go slow. You don't want to lay your hands on the piece. Now my Bermina is good about pulling, pulling everything right through. I'm just lightly guiding the fabric and I'm trying to keep the project from dragging on the front of my machine. Okay, now when I get here, I'm going to put my needle in the down position and I'm simply going to rotate my fabric. And I'm going to move it over and the line I just sewed becomes my new baseline. And the edge of my presser foot, walking foot, is going to go right along. that line all the way down to the end. Okay. I'm going to put my needle in the down position and I'm going to rotate my project again. Now, as you can tell, I'm not back tacking. And there's no need to back tack because you're going to cross all those lines when you put your binding on. And I also do a little stay stitch all around the outside edge of my projects. Now, you may have a tiny bit of wave to a line here and there just from where you gently or accidentally bumped your machine when you're sewing. And that's okay because remember, it doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. And we are simply human. So our lines will have a little bit of wave to them. I'm going to sew one more line and then I'm going to measure to see if I'm staying the same distance clear through the project.
Okay, so as you can see here, now I'm just going to see how far I am from my reference line. Wow, that's right at two inches. Check it here in the middle, two inches. Check it down here. And that is right at two inches. So I don't need to really make any adjustments, so I'm just going to keep going. difference then on this row I could just slightly make an adjustment if I knew that this was too far away I might be able to move just a little bit over this way and then the next line just a little bit more take a measurement and see how I'm doing see it's just adding beautiful texture to this piece and I'll just keep doing that until I get to the very end then I will um, start on this side oh yes I almost forgot to show you what I use these clips for so I roll up the extra and I just put a clip on each end of these you can see there's one here on this end, and this end, and there's one on the end of each side. And that just holds that piece in place. And then as I unroll it, I just have to reclamp those. But these have worked better than anything else I've tried. Just as a reminder, I am posting videos twice a week, once on Wednesdays and once on Fridays. On Fridays, it will simply be quick tips related to quilting. So please don't forget to watch those on Friday. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Please share with a friend. And as always, leave a comment. I'd love to get the comments, and I try to reply to each and every one. So until next time, have fun quilting.